Hey everyone, I am so sorry that I can't be with you this weekend to kick off our book club series, but there's no way I wouldn't do it this way. Come on. Uh, because I have one of my good friends that's gonna come speak, but we needed you to see us together. Absolutely. Because if you don't know who this is, this is Matt Keller, founding and lead pastor of Next Level Church in Fort Myers. And what you need to know is that almost seven years ago when I came here, you were the absolute first person wow. to open your arms to me. You said, I wanna know you, yeah. you invited me over, we talked baseball, life, and since that day, you have been nothing but a great friend. You are cheering for me. You are cheering for us. You've opened your network to me, given me access to your friends. We've been to baseball games oh, together, yeah. played golf together, Absolutely. laughed, uh, cried, prayed together. Yes. And, uh, and I just want you guys to know that a big part of my development and our success is because of Matt, his network, his leadership, and I can't thank you enough. And so even though I couldn't be here with them, they needed to see our friendship Absolutely. together. Well, I agree. And Pastor Corey, I just want to honor you, um, man, to, to see the way you have just stewarded what God has has done here at Cape Christian is awesome. And you know, there's so much competition yeah. in our world today and in the body of Christ. And I just, from the moment I met you, man, it was like, this is not competition, this is brotherhood. Yeah. And I count you a brother, a friend, and I just love you. I love that we get to do this together. I am cheering you on yep. from across the river. Yep. And we are not in competition. We are brothers yep. in, at arms together in Southwest Florida. Yeah, I think one of the sad things is how many churches forget that we're competing yep. against a kingdom of darkness and not each other. And that's never been an issue here. And, and I, I said to you off camera, uh, sometimes when you're going through something hard, people will pray for you. But when you get some wins, there's very few people that will cheer for you. And you guys just need to know that as we've continued to win and see God move, in almost historic proportions that Matt and Next Level, his team, his staff, they've literally been cheering me on and us on. And so it's a big deal for me that you're here to talk to my people. Your book is awesome, your heart is better, and I'm so excited that my, my people get to hear what I get to hear regularly. So um, guys, I need you to get on your feet. Matt Keller, Next Level, Donkey Mission, let's go. Well, what's up, Cape Christian? Hey, come on, let's give Jesus praise. He's the one who deserves it all. Lord, we exalt you. God, we exalt you tonight, Lord. What a gift your salvation is. Hey, before you see to give somebody a high five and say, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. Come on, tell them, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. If you're glad you're in the house tonight, say yes. Come on, me too, and uh, I am just honored. It is an absolute honor to be here uh, in Cape Coral, all the way from Fort Myers. Come on, somebody. And uh, just excited to be at Cape Christian uh, Church this weekend with all of you. As we're launching our new series called Book Club. Everyone say Book Club. And uh, I'm not here by myself. Actually, my wife, Sarah, Sarah Stand Up, is with me uh, here tonight. <laughs> And it was, it was 22 years ago that Sarah and I left the only home we had ever known in a small town in northeast Indiana. And we had a big vision in our heart and no clue how, what God was going to do or how God was going to do it. And God had given us a vision for Southwest Florida. And when we went into the leadership of our fellowship there in Indiana, they, <laughs> you know how the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament, we extended the right hand of fellowship? Well, we got the left foot of fellowship. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And they basically said, y'all go ahead, don't call us, we'll call you. And 22 years in, still, still waiting on the call. And when we moved to Southwest Florida, we had $9,200 to our name. And no clue what we were doing, just a big vision of this thing called Next Level Church. And we got down here, and we were so alone and <laughs> so clueless. And Pastor Dennis Gingrich took me to lunch at Applebee's on Del Prado. And he, I shared my story, and he shared his. And he told me how he was a church planner now 37 years ago. And he and his group of pastor friends took me in. And they made sure that I didn't feel alone anymore. And so, yeah, come on. So, Pastor Dennis and Linda, I know that you are not here. You're out of, the, out of town this weekend. But I just want to honor you today. I just want to tell you that I'm honored to stand on this platform that the Holy Spirit has allowed you to build. Cape Christian, you are a pillar church in the region of Southwest Florida. And I want you to know, Pastor Corey and I are, are great friends. As you heard us say, it's real. We are cheering each other on. How many know there's only one church in Southwest Florida? And that is the church of Jesus. Amen. 
So when he reached out to me a couple months ago and said, hey, Matt, I want you to come and I want you to bring your book and kind of launch this book club series that we do in the month of June, which is such a great idea. Uh, and as an author, I think it's a really great idea, by the way. Um, <laughs> such a great idea. And you're in for some good books. He's told me the other ones that are coming uh, throughout the weeks of this series. So don't miss one week uh, here of our book club series together. And I say our because when I'm in a church like this, I feel like I'm just one of the staff pastors. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let me introduce real quick my family to you. I think we have a picture. My oldest son, we have two sons, Will and Drew, 23 and 21. My oldest son got married last uh, July uh, to uh, his sweetheart that he met at SEU up in Lakeland, Jess, and so that's their wedding picture. And then my youngest son, uh, Drew, is 21 and uh, is studying for the ministry uh, at Southeastern University at Next Level. But we have a Next Level campus over in Fort Myers uh, Extension side. And so I uh, want to introduce you. And then as, as, uh, as we've said, we are the pastors, founding and lead pastors of Next Level Church here in Southwest Florida. We have Fort Myers location. We have a Cape Coral location up on right off of Santa Barbara and Del... Uh, in uh, Pine Island, and then we have an East location on Gateway Boulevard, and then we are launching our fourth location downtown on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in September. So a lot going on, and uh, just so thankful. And if that's not enough to keep me busy, I write books as well. And so as you came into the service this weekend, uh, the team handed you one of these, right? Everybody got your book? Okay, good. And I, we just wanted to sow that as seed to you. Sarah and I just, as we were praying about it, we said, you know what? It would be our honor to be able to just give each family uh, who is here at Cape Christian this weekend a, a copy of uh, the book, Donkey Mission. So uh, this actually came out um, September of 2022. Anybody remember what it, we weren't? Literally three weeks before Hurricane Ian hit, we launched Donkey Mission nationally uh, in churches all over the country. And <laughs> three weeks in, God sent us on a donkey mission. And you're like, what in the world is a donkey mission? That's what I want to talk about. Hey, one more time. Come on. Before we open God's word, can we just open our hearts? Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be one church here in Southwest Florida to lift up the name of Jesus. God, we want to see revival in our region. God, we want to see you move. We want to see more people ushered into the kingdom of heaven than are going to hell from Southwest Florida. And so, God, I thank you for Pastor Corey and Rebecca. I pray blessing on them. And uh, this weekend, Lord, as they pour out, would you just be with them and strengthen them right where they are? And now, Father, as we turn to your word, we ask that you would speak, Lord. Our hearts are open. Our answer is yes. Now, what's the question? How do you want us to, what do you want us to do? God, we want to respond to you in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed with that prayer said amen. So uh, if you're wondering what a donkey mission is, it really comes from the story of a man named Saul. Everyone say Saul. And we find his story uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, and specifically 1 Samuel chapter 9. Saul uh, became the first king over the children of Israel, who were God's people in the Old Testament. But before Saul became king, God had to send him on a special mission well, you're about to see. But before we turn there, let me ask you a question. Have you ever um, asked yourself the question, what's the point? Anybody, like when you call your credit card company and you enter in all of the numbers, it says, please enter, your, you enter in all the numbers, and then you wait on hold for like, I don't know, nine days. <laughs> then when they finally pick up, what's the first question they ask you? What's your credit card number? Why did I type all that in? Or when you, go to, like, when you go to the doctor's office and they hand you a stack of papers, like a 1.78 inch thick, right? And at the top of each one is name, address, photo. It's like, can't, why don't you guys copy this for me so I don't have to write? Like, what's, right? like, what's the point? Or maybe in your major, when you were in college, a professor had to, you know, ask you, and you know, in order for you to complete your major, one of the, you know, classes that you had to take was like literature of the antiquities. And you're like... I'm a math major. Like, why does this matter to me, right? We've all had those moments, haven't we, where we've asked the question, what's the point? Well, when you talk about this idea of a donkey mission, what we discover in God's Word is that there's something more going on when we're asking the question, what's the point? Let's look at the story. First Samuel chapter 9, starting in verse 1, it says this. There was a Benjamite, a man of standing, whose name was... Kish, son of Ebiel, the son of Zeror, the son of another guy, the son of another guy, of Benjamin. Here's the point. They're in the bloodline of Benjamin. That's what you need to know. That's going to come back here in a few minutes. Okay, verse 2. Look, Kish had a son named Saul. There he is. There's the main character of our story. I want to say Saul. Okay, so Kish had a son named Saul. Now look, Saul was as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel. And he was a head taller than anyone else. So Saul 
is essentially Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome. Like, like this is not just any ordinary guy. Like, this is a guy who is, who is head and shoulders above everybody. Like, this is a linebacker kind of guy. Like, from the beginning, Saul was destined for something special. From the beginning, Saul was, especially as we said just a moment ago, Saul's destiny was to become the first king over Israel. Let me pause for just a second and say this. You know you're something special, right? I don't want us to, I don't want us to miss this. And you may think, you may look at yourself and go, yeah, but Matt, I'm not tall, dark, and handsome. I'm not, I'm just average. I'm just ordinary. Hey, can I tell you something? You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. That's who you are, and it's so easy in our world today where we're bombarded with messages of comparison and messages of, of doubt and messages of you're not enough, and if you only had this, then you'd be, or if you only got that, then you would. Can I just tell you something? You are made in your heavenly Father's image, and he sees you just the way you are. He made you. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. You are exactly who God wants you to be. There's only one you, and we need you to be you, just like we needed Saul to be Saul. Let's continue reading. Look at verse 3. Now remember, Saul was about to become the first king over Israel. But before he became king, here comes the donkey mission. Verse 3, look. Now, the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son, he calls his son in, and he says, take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkey. So before Saul, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome, right? Before Saul, Mr. Destined for Greatness, becomes the first king over Israel, God's people in the Old Testament, before all of that, he has to first go on a, say it with me, donkey mission. Imagine being Saul. Imagine in this moment, right? Like your, his dad calls him in and he's like, hey, hey son, come here, uh, have a seat. Um, all right, so here's the deal we've lost some donkeys. And I need you to go look for him. Imagine Saul being like, Ak, excuse me? Like, what? Like, what? what? Like, no, no, we have servants who do that for us, Dad. Like, why? no, no, why do I have to? No, like, great, you need me? So, wait, Dad, you want me to send someone? No, 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 I want you to go on this donkey mission. And I'd imagine in that moment, Saul, he probably didn't say it out loud, but he was thinking in his head, are you kidding me? What in the world is the point of me going on a donkey mission? Maybe just maybe the father knew what his son needed, even when the son didn't know it. Ever been on a donkey mission? I know I have. So I told you the story of us moving here 22 years ago. So January of 2002, and when we resigned our position up north, as I said before, we were given a less than stellar send-off. When we get down here, we needed money. We had $9,200 to our name. And so um, I had, you know, nine years of ministry experience on my resume. And so I started to apply different places to, to try and get a job because we needed money. We had a 19-month-old uh, 19 old son uh, at the time with us. And so um, Sarah was home with, with Will. And, and so I started applying. I started applying everywhere. I applied at Walmart. I applied at Target. I applied at gas stations. I applied everywhere. And literally every time I go in for a job interview, they would say to me, well, all of your experience on your resume is ministry experience. Why aren't, you, why aren't you doing something in your field? To which I would have to look back at them and say, I kind of am, but I can't tell you because I need a job. So what I discovered was I was certifiably unemployable. So we knew one, one family. We knew one family who owned a jewelry store on Del Prado Boulevard, Richard and Jennifer Fessel. Some of you remember Fessel Jewelers? On Del Prado Boulevard, anybody? And so I called up my friend Richard and I said, hey, man, I need a job. And he graciously said, come on in. And so for the first about six months of our church, when we were starting at the Bell Tower Movie Theaters over in Fort Myers, every single day I would get up and I would drive across the Midpoint Bridge to Del Prado Boulevard. And I would sit in the back of a jewelry store, and I would change watch batteries, and I would size rings, and I would try and sell jewelry that I knew nothing about to old ladies who would come in. No offense. <laughs> this one lady said I looked like Frank Sinatra because I had blue eyes, and she'd come in. 
And I tried to play that to my advantage to try and sell this lady jewelry that she didn't need and I knew nothing about. Anyway, I digress. I can't tell you how many times over those six or so months where Richard and Jennifer graciously paid me $11 an hour and I was overpaid. How many times I sat at that bench, at that jewelry bench, and just thought to myself, what am I doing? What's the point? I'm here because God put this big dream in my heart called Next Level Church. I'm here to impact the region of Southwest Florida, and instead I'm changing watch batteries and sizing rings. What's the point? What's the point? I would imagine that's where Saul found himself. Look at verse 4. So he takes off with his buddy to go to look for these lost donkeys, and it says, So he passed through the hill country of Ephraim and through the area around Shalisha, but they did not find them. They went on into the district of Shalim, but the donkeys were not there. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they didn't find them. They went to a lot of different places. Let me give you four thoughts. Maybe you want to write these down, take some notes uh, this weekend. Four truths about donkey missions that we find ourselves on. Here's the first one. Number one, donkey missions test our patience. Isn't it true? You ever been on a donkey mission? Donkey missions test our patience. I would imagine for Saul, as he's traveling from place to place to place, as a matter of fact, theologians tell us that this journey that Saul and his servant took was probably somewhere between 30 and 35 miles that they went looking for these lost donkeys. So this donkey mission for Saul was long. It was boring. And honestly, it wasn't going well. They've been looking in four places. They still haven't found anything. Ever had a donkey mission test your patience? Like when your boss calls you in and says, hey, we have a great opportunity for you. And you know as soon as they do the air quotes, you're in trouble. You know what I'm talking about? We have a new territory, and it didn't work out for the last guy. Why are we putting everything in air quotes right now, boss? Well, it turns out the territory is up in Sarasota, and you're going to have to commute 90 minutes one way each day. Donkey mission. Contest our patients or parents. Come on. That baby that you prayed for, that you longed for, that now you just change diapers for, like 16 to 18 diapers a day on that newborn donkey mission. See, the problem in our culture today is that, to you, Saul, as the illustration, we all just want to be king. We want what our parents have. We just want it 15 years faster. We want what our bosses have. We just want it in three years or less. We, 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 want, we want to graduate and be in the C-suite in 18 to 24 months. We want to be called into ministry and be leading a large church or a large ministry, a large team in, in a, a matter of six or nine months. Our, see, our culture has made 15 minutes of fame look better than humbling ourselves before God on some seemingly pointless donkey mission. Look, Saul's tempted. Look, verse 5. When they reached the district of Zuf, so they go to a fifth place, Saul said to the servant who was with him, come on, man, let's go back. Or, look, his pride and ego kick in. Or my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. Saul wants to quit the donkey mission. Ever wanted to quit a donkey mission? Ever wanted to give up when you're sitting in the back of a jewelry store trying to plant a church, trying to figure it out? Ever wanted to give up? Saul wants to quit. He's like, man, we've been to four different places, now five. And we've had no luck. Nothing's happening. And his ego kicks in right here. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, oh, here's my way out. Uh, Well, my dad's going to remember just how big of a deal I am. He's going to stop worrying about the donkeys and going to remember how awesome I am. Hey, is it possible that sometimes, sometimes our comfort... And ease is not God's number one priority? Saul's patience was tested on the donkey mission. Let's continue on, verse 6. But the servant replied, thank God for friends, godly friends who will speak wisdom and truth to us in these moments. Look, but the servant replied, look, in this town there's a man of God. He's highly respected, and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. So essentially, the servant, and we don't know how, but he knows that there's a prophet whose name was Elijah who was essentially God's spokesperson to the entire nation. Back in the Old Testament, God would choose one person, and they would become the spokesperson, the prophet, the preacher, the proclaimer of God's truth and God's ways to the entire nation for, for their entire life, for a generation. 
And somehow this servant knows that Elijah the prophet is literally in the town that they happen to be in at this exact moment. So he says to Saul, let's go talk to him. Maybe he can help us. Look, verse 7, Saul starts to make excuses. He said to his servant, yeah, but if we go, like, what are we going to give him? Because you're supposed to bring a, you know, you're supposed to get, bring an offering to a person like that. The food in our sacks is gone. We don't have a gift to take to the man of God. Look, what do we have? He instantly starts making, anybody ever made excuses on a donkey mission? You'll love chapter 8. Verse 8, look, the servant answered him again. Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I'll give it to the man of God so he'll tell us what way to take. Number two, write it down. Donkey missions keep us humble. Not only do donkey missions test our patience, but donkey missions, secondly, keep us humble. Can you imagine how hard it must have been for Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome, Mr. Got the World by the Tail, Mr. I'm going to be awesome something someday, to humble himself and go to the prophet of the land. And ask him to help them find their lost donkeys? Anybody know who Rick Warren is? Rick Warren, many of us know, it was one of the most prominent pastors in our country. He wrote the book about 20 years ago, The Purpose Driven Life, literally has impacted hundreds and hundreds of millions of people around the globe. To this day, God continues to use him to impact hundreds of millions of people. Pastored Saddleback Church in uh, Southern California for 43 years, just a couple years ago, transitioned the church, and now is just continuing to work on global problems. This would be like... If you and I found out that Rick Warren was in Cape Coral this weekend, and you and I went to where he was, slipped past security, however that works, walk up to Rick Warren and said, hey, I know that you're super consumed with like global poverty and global hunger and like eradicating AIDS and other issues in our world, but is there any chance that God has spoken to you about, not mine, but my dad's lost animals? That's what this would have been like. Ever been humbled by a donkey mission? And not only was Saul humbled by this donkey mission, but he had to bum money off his buddy just to get in the meeting. But thank God, Saul humbles himself. Look, verse 10. Good, Saul said to his servant, come on, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. Thankfully, thank God. Saul humbles himself on this donkey mission. Verse 11, as they were going up the hill to the town, they met some young women, uh-oh, coming out to draw water. And they asked them, is the seer here? They call prophets in that day seers. So they're like, is, is this where the prophet is? Verse 12, he is, the, these young ladies answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He's just come to our town today for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. Here's the third thing I want to share about donkey missions this weekend. Number three, donkey missions will test our integrity. Not only will donkey missions keep us humble and test our patience, but third, donkey missions will test our integrity. See, I don't think it's chance or happenstance that at the exact moment where Saul is at his lowest point, He's on a pointless mission. He doesn't want to be there. He's making up excuses. He's tired. Him and his buddy have been traveling for several days, probably living outside, enduring danger. They haven't showered. They haven't eaten. They ran out of food, he said earlier, right? So Saul is at his lowest point. And at the lowest point in Saul's journey, all of a sudden, I don't think it's coincidence that these fine young ladies, bow, chicka, wow, wow, come walking by. Can I just tell you, the devil is smart. He loses, but he's smart. And he will wait until you and I find ourselves on some pointless, not going well, failing donkey mission where we are discouraged and depressed, where we want to give up, and then all of a sudden the devil will send just the appropriate, because he knows, temptation across our path. Church family, we have to be so, so aware in those low moments of temptation that is knocking at our door. You think it's a coincidence that when you were at your lowest, that's when your old high school girlfriend found you on Facebook? It's not a coincidence 
There's an enemy of our soul who wants to destroy us. The enemy knew for Saul what was ahead, that God's hand was on him and God was about to raise him up to be the first king over Israel. Church, there are always distractions and opportunities to get sidetracked and permanently off course on a donkey mission. And so many people with a huge upside potential lose their way in the middle of donkey missions than you and I can imagine. And the reason is because in the immediate, what we're doing looks so unfruitful. It looks so worthless, so so pointless. And even if we succeed, they're stupid donkeys. (laughs) And at this point, Saul has a decision to make. Is this donkey mission more important? than hanging out with these fine young ladies. People do this all the time because we feel like what we're giving ourselves isn't isn't bearing the kind of fruit that we thought it would. Well, I thought we'd be further along financially. Well, I thought I'd be further in my career than I am right now. Well, I thought I wouldn't just be in this pointless job or this pointless ministry, and and all of a sudden we end up quitting a a job. We We quit a marriage for an affair. We quit a ministry. We quit tithing and living generously. We, we quit a small group. We quit serving because no one recognizes my gift. We'll leave a church because of temptation. The same temptation that Saul experienced on his donkey mission. Look at verse 14. Thank God he doesn't give in to temptation. Look at verse 14. They went up to the town, and as they were entering it, there was Samuel, it wasn't Elijah, I'm sorry, it was Samuel, my bad. Samuel the prophet, not Elijah. I get him confused sometimes. There was Samuel the prophet, look, coming toward them on his way up to the high place. So Saul doesn't give in to the temptation, and instead he goes up to the high place, and he sees Samuel the prophet coming toward him. Now, at this point in the Bible, here's what's about to happen. What's about to happen is between verse 14 and verse 15, we're about to see a a 24-hour flashback. Okay, so like if this was a Netflix series, like there'd be a little subscript underneath the bottom that says 24 hours earlier. Look, verse 15. (laughs) Now, the day before, everyone say the day before. Okay, so there's our flashback. Look, so Saul's coming up the hill, see Samuel, boom, we flash back. Now, the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. So God speaks to Samuel the prophet. Look, verse 16. About, here's what God says, 24 hours before. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines, their enemy. I have looked on my people for their cry has reached me. Then it flashes forward 24 hours back to present time. It says, when Samuel the prophet caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, this is the man I spoke to you about yesterday. He will govern my people. Here's the last thought I want to give you about our donkey missions. Number four, donkey missions are always about something greater than donkeys. Donkey missions are always about something greater than donkeys. Because at the exact same time that Saul is on this seemingly pointless donkey mission, God is speaking to Samuel about him. And church family, here's what I want to encourage you with this weekend. We never know when our donkey mission and our greater mission are about to collide. And I come with good news this weekend, Cape Christian, to tell you this. Donkey missions are the very thing God will use to prepare us for our greater mission. They're the very thing God will use to lead us to our greater mission if we will stay humble enough, patient enough, and faithful enough to trust God while we're on them. That's the power of a donkey mission. So, ever been on a donkey mission? Maybe you're on one right now. I have a feeling all of us are. So let me just give you a couple of quick challenges with this. Here's the first thing I would say. Listen, stop worrying so much about your greater mission and just start being faithful to your donkey mission. If I've learned anything in 22 years of leading our church here in Southwest Florida and 30 years of ministry, it's this. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. If I could go back and talk to my 26-year-old jewelry-working Matt 
on Del Prado? You know what I would say? Hey, Matt, God's got you. All those dreams, all that greater stuff that's in your heart that you envision for Southwest Florida, it's going to happen. Just stay faithful. Just stay faithful. Just stay faithful. Here's another thing I'd share with you. Don't let anything be beneath you. Man, don't let anything be beneath you. If you feel like you're on a donkey mission right now, maybe in your job, maybe in your family, maybe you feel like you're on a donkey mission with your kids or with your grandkids or in your marriage or some, or maybe in the church, you're like, oh, man, I wish I, I, God was using me in a great, yeah, just stay faithful. Don't let anything be beneath you. The path to promotion in God's economy is always serving. Serve the donkey mission of the Father and watch how God will line it up with your greater mission. And then stop seeing, everything, stop seeing things as pointless and start seeing them as practice. Man, if I could say anything to 26-year-old Matt working at the jewelry store in Del Prado, I would say, hey, guess what? Nothing's pointless on this journey. It's all just practice for where God is taking you. Today, Sarah and I are privileged to pastor Next Level Church here in Southwest Florida. We also lead a network of 163 churches called the Next Level Relational Network that, again, as Pastor Corey mentioned, you guys, we are part of that. You're, we're family. God's using us all over the country. God allows us to write books. And can I just tell you, I'm so humbled. That God lets me do this. And as I look back over our path, our journey, I can see God's hand lining it up. I can see God bringing the right mentors that I needed at the right time. He brought me a man named Pastor Dennis Gingrich, Pastor George A. Savito, other great men of God whose shoulders we stand on today in this community. And I'm truly humble. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the donkey missions that have led to the greater mission. So I want to pray for us. And we've intentionally created just a little bit of space here at the end of our time together today to meet with the Lord. Around Next Level Church, we like to say often that one touch from God can change everything. One word from God can change everything. So maybe you're here today, Cape Christian family, and you need a touch from God. Maybe you're on a donkey mission, and you need God to reach down. Just touch your heart. Can we just, in every room, every environment that you're in, online family, you too, can we just pause, maybe just close your eyes to close out the distractions. God, you're here. God, you're here and you want to move. And so Holy Spirit, we give you permission to move. We sang the song at the beginning of our time together. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. So God, I pray for the discouraged one today. God, I pray for the one who feels hopeless. God, I pray for the one who feels like they're just on a pointless mission and they don't understand. They just feel like they're chasing donkeys all over nowhere. God, would you speak to every heart right now? Would you allow us, Lord, to have a sense and a confidence that only comes from you? That what we're giving our lives to is not happenstance, it's not chance. It's divine appointment. You are ordering our steps. The steps of a righteous person are ordered of God, the Word of God says. Staying in this atmosphere of prayer for just a moment, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to a relationship with Jesus. Because I know it's possible that there are some, maybe dozens or hundreds even this weekend, over the course of a weekend like this, who've come into our time together. You're watching and participating online. And you don't know Jesus. You're not in relationship with the living God. You can be. It's a free gift. This isn't about being a good person or trying really hard or working really hard. It's, it's about the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus came. Here at Cape Christian, we're all about lifting up the name of Jesus. He is our Savior. He came to this earth. He lived a perfect, sinless life and died on a cross, not for his own sin, but for your sin and my sin. Why? So that we could know what it is to be in relationship with God because, see, our sin separates us from our loving Heavenly Father. That's why Jesus came. And if you want to say yes to a relationship with Jesus, I want to pray with you right now. As a matter of fact, we all want to pray. Around here, we like to say that no one prays alone. So if you want to 
say yes to a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you're far from God. You, in the past, you know you've made a decision for the Lord. You know what it is to be in a relationship with God, but you know you've walked away, and you've let time and circumstance put distance between you and your Heavenly Father. And God's brought you here this weekend to give you an opportunity to come back to Him. I want to pray for you. So for the sake of so many in this room and other rooms who want to pray that prayer, can we pray this together? Will you just repeat after me? Come on, let's all pray this together. And if, if this is you, would you pray this in your heart? God's going to hear you, and he's going to come in and transform your life. Come on, let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and bringing me here this weekend. I needed this word. I acknowledge in this moment that I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Make me a new creation. And from this point forward, I want to live for you. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, come on, can we celebrate together? You know what, across this room, can we just stand to our feet? Let's just, we're going to dismiss in just a moment. We're not done yet, but I just I want us to stand together. And listen, if you prayed that prayer, here's what we want you to do. Would you just grab your phone right now, and we want you to text CAPE, yes, all one word, CAPE, yes, to this number, 94,000, 94,000, CAPE, yes, all one word, to 94,000. Because we have our team here at Cape Christian, and we want to help you take your next steps in this new relationship with Jesus. Secondly, let me let you know, the team wanted me to let you know that we gave you a copy of the book, but if while I've been talking, God's put someone on your heart and you're going, man, this would be a great book for my nephew or this would be a great book for my coworker, we have a table in the lobby that has the Donkey Mission books for $6. And so if you want to grab some more copies of that, wanted to make sure that you were aware of that, uh, that there's a table where you can get additional copies uh, this weekend. Sound good? Hey, can I pray a blessing over you tonight? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that we are one church in Southwest Florida, one church. And God, we pray for every church across our great region. Lord, we pray for every church. God, I pray for every pastor, Lord. Pastor Corey and I are friends with so many of them here in Cape Coral and in Fort Myers and Estero and Bonita and Naples and Lehigh and in Babcock Ranch and Ponte Gorda and Port Charlotte. And so, Father, we thank you that your hand of blessing is on Southwest Florida. And God, I thank you that And we pray for unity in the body of Christ. That, Lord, when one church wins, we all win. And we will celebrate together. And so, God, I pray blessing over Cape Christian. I pray blessing over their future. I pray blessing over their expansion. I pray everything that they need, God, you would provide miraculously. Lord, would you use us, God, to be a part of what you want to do, that we could continue to shine the light of Jesus in Cape Coral and across Southwest Florida and to the nations of the world. God, I bless Pastor Corey and Rebecca. I bless their children tonight. I bless this great church in the name of Jesus. And everyone who agreed to that prayer said, amen. Come on, with one big voice, let's give God a shout of praise.